Hey gang, in today's video we are going to be covering the case that I use for most of my kids shows and uh, let's take a closer look. Now if this doesn't look completely familiar to you, it's probably because you're more used to seeing it marketed as something that looks more like uh, something along the lines of this and this. Well that's where it started anyway. So I've been using this case for about 10 years now and a lot has changed in those 10 years, both in the show and outside of the show as well. Both of which are for the better, of course. So the fabric on here again, I found on Etsy. Um, it's kind of got a cool steampunk looking motif to it with the uh, little owls with the clocks and all that. The pumpkins, the jack-o'-lanterns rather, um, are obviously very Halloween themed. They actually don't show very much. They're on the back and the top, but you don't even see them on the front. So it really is, isn't a Halloween motif because really nobody sees it during the show. But it took a lot longer to apply that fabric to that case than I ever would have dreamt it did. And for that reason, I built a case for it. It's nothing more than cardboard with like a wallpaper that I got at maybe a Hobby Lobby or Michael's, I think. And it's just brick. And that brick pattern, boy, kids think I'm Hercules. They make a big deal out of that. They, you walk in with that or walk out with it and they they think that's a big deal. It's kind of hilarious how big of a thing that is. And I was very fortunate. I've been driving electric vehicles for quite a number of years now. And when I bought this Model 3, uh, there's a trunk uh, underneath the main floor of the rear cargo section of the car. And it just happens to fit like a glove in there. So that was just kind of lucky, but I uh, thought I'd show it. Now, one thing you cannot tell from the outside is that this is also a speaker stand or concealer of sorts. And uh, this is, fabric goes across here. I put this fabric over here. And on the inside, there's actually a hole cut. And I'll show you the inside. There's a magnetic uh, wooden flap with a magnet that is holding that. It's just Gorilla Tape holding that magnet on there. And there's um, ta uh, tape and or glue holding a magnet up here as well so that that will stay in the shut position. But there's a hole there for a speaker, for that sound to come out. And it's not custom for this speaker, it was customized for the last speaker that I had, but I currently have this uh, little Bose. But it still lets a lot of that sound out, and if I really wanted to, I could expand that hole, so it's just perfect. But in any event, when I put that speaker in there, and I want to use a little music, just quick and simple, without setting up a whole sound system, that works out really well. And then before I finish and hit the road, so that I don't break out that hole with my props, close that door. Pretty quick and simple. All right, now it's time for my favorite part of the video. The whole reason I made this video was actually to show the theming that you could do for the covers. Now, this is not limited to this type of case. If you have a different type of suitcase table, you can apply these same kind of techniques to just about any kind of suitcase table uh, with whatever adaptations you want to make. Now, a lot of the stuff that I'm about to show you came from our favorite magic shop folks, the Dollar Tree, soon to be the Dollar 25 cent tree, I think. Um, in any event, this is one of my favorite Dollar Tree makes here. And these are basically holiday yard fencing. They're little panels that fit in the front yard that you can border your yard with. They come with little stakes and they're slightly larger or longer here than what you see. But I trimmed them off with a table saw on both sides and I cut off with a handsaw the little spikes that drive them down into the yard. I put on some uh, chain here with a little bit of wire or bread ties here, a little wiring there. Uh, the chain was also, like I said, from the Dollar Tree. And then they even found in the Halloween season these little lights and some mesh fabric and that all goes together on a piece of wood. If you're not a woodworker, that's okay. You could also just use uh, some heavy duty cardboard or something like that. And there's magnets. There's magnets underneath here that are taped down to make sure they don't come out of place and they're also Gorilla glued on. Then there's another magnet on the other side here to give it some extra strength. And that whole gizmo goes on the front and will magnetize right to the front. Although this side is slightly waning maybe a little reinforcement there. And you might also notice that there are holes here and those holes line up with the corresponding speaker openings that I showed you here. So basically when I set my portable speaker inside here it's going through the layer of fabric right here, the opening here, and then it's going through this as well through the mesh. And it's got a pretty good line un uninterrupted uh, from the speaker to the audience there. 
And worst case scenario, you can just take the speaker and not place it right inside the suitcase table itself. And that is more the case with these other ones because I did not cut speaker holes in these. But here we have one for Christmas. Voila, also magnetized, but it got so heavy along the way that I ended up just putting a, a clamp from um, Home Depot or Lowe's on there. But it also magnetizes onto the front. And if you take just a little bit of time there, you can align it properly onto the front and you can do different modes with these. Voila, if I turn out some lights, you can kind of see that they are actually lit up. So I've got two strings of these. So a couple bucks worth of Christmas lights here, some Christmas wrapping paper over a wooden board and then the clamp is attached to a piece of tape that's attached to the back and then some magnets on both sides just like so that stick right on there like that. So Halloween, Christmas, you could do anything of course you wanted to. Um, this is a pretty cool one. You could uh, make a board here. This is actually from my birthday. Thanks, sis. And uh, you could have fixed that onto the front there on a little shelf or something like that and uh, have it on either during or before the show or whatever. So that's a lot of fun. And now it's time for the piece de la resiste, the piece de la, whatever that fancy French word is that means the great big grand finale ending one, that's what's coming up here. And I, I know you weren't expecting this, so you don't really know um, what you were going to be seeing at the end here, but um, this is what you would have waited for had you known it was coming. And this is for all my steampunk fellow magician friends out here. My favorite one. And this one has hooks because it's a little big to try and even think about magnetizing. Sits right on the front just like so. Working gears, uh, simulated gauges, and the blue blob faucet of whatever. Toxic something. Kind of went with the blue theme. So I just kind of went with it. These gauges are all available on Etsy. I added the light myself. I also found a little light on eBay or Etsy. Uh, drilled a little hole in there and it's wired in there with a little battery pack so it's got a separate switch inside. Um, gauges are fake here. This clock is actually working. It's got a hole cut so it recesses in. This faucet um, has some washers glued to the back of it. And then I recessed some magnets on here. And the reason I did that is in case a kid walks by and trips on it, I'd rather have them or kicks it with their shoulder or whatever, which has already happened. Um, rather than knocking the whole thing off, they just knock this off. And this is much easier to replace than the entire thing. So that is uh, kind of what that is. But yeah, these gauges, all available on Etsy. If you just look at Steampunk on Etsy, all this stuff will almost certainly come up. And uh, it opens here. I can access some of the gears and stuff from the back if I need to work on something. I can also open it from the top here with a little hinge. And that way I can turn everything off from the inside. Uh, the switch to the light and the gearbox are in there. The switch to the little blue blob faucet is right there. And had so much fun making this. Um, I don't know how many hours I put into making this. And unless you're a woodworker, um, you're obviously not even going to attempt that one. But these other ones are much more practical. You can make this uh, with stuff around your house and um, it's a lot easier. So I hope you have fun with it. Um, I've had a blast making this stuff and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, I might be a little too in love with my own creation here, but I thought I'd give you one last glance in slightly lower light and a close-up of the functioning gearbox here. Don't ask me what it's supposed to measure, but uh, it's just a lot of fun. I bought these off Etsy, and I'm going to list the guy's direct website here so that you can just look at his website and order from him directly. Good guy named John. Um, he's out of England, and um, we'll ship you whatever you need. All of these pieces that you're looking at are 3D printed, and he makes all this stuff himself in a small shop. And... Um, had great customer service with the guy and um, thought I'd just take a moment to promote his stuff specifically. And um, just had so much fun making this particular prop that uh, thought I'd just spend a little more time on this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, just let me know.